under the city lights Wherever the wind go take us If it's good we make it contagious And we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad and fall from the deep end Said we vibing Under the city lights Wherever the wind go take us If it's good we make it contagious Said we vibing Laying on black sand beaches Thinking of what life teaches So glad and fall from the deep end Said we vibing. In the reef aquarium hobby it's very common to see people recommending soft corals to beginners. Things like pulsing zinnia and green star polyps, which are very fast growing and easy to keep corals, or leather corals such as toadstools, devil's hands, finger leathers to name a few. These are the classic candidates that are always being recommended to newer aquarists trying out coral for the first time. But there's a whole range of soft corals, some which are far more challenging to keep such as Suspicillaria, and some that are just as easy to keep as these typical ones, if not slightly easier, such as Asterospicularia. And Asterospicularia is the topic of today's video. Now there is a common name for this coral, and it's Star Spike Coral. From my understanding of a loose translation from Latin to English of Asterospicularia, is that that means Star Spike Coral. So clearly when the genus was first identified, that's what they thought it looked like. I've been farming this coral for a while. I don't really see it, and at New Dawn Aquaculture we've always just referred to it as Asterospicularia, um, but that's what it's called. Now we are most likely farming the species Lore. There is apparently a second species called Randali, but according to Indo-Pacific Corals by Joe Rowlett, they are most likely the same species that was just identified twice separately. There's really not a lot of information online about this coral. I've looked for other people keeping it, any care tips out there. I've looked at what other strains there may be. The strain that we're keeping is a more purplish bronze. I have seen photos online of a more white looking strain. A lot of those look like they're photos from the ocean though. So I'm curious if in captivity it would end up looking like the strain we're growing or if it would be a distinct color morph. Either way I'd love to get my hands on it so I could grow it out and you know see if it would be a distinct color morph. The strain of Asterospicularia that we are growing has purplish bronze polyps with white stalks. Now when this coral is happy and healthy, the best way I can describe what it looks like when all those polyps are out is a lumpy carpet. And I know that's not a flattering way to describe what is otherwise a pretty cool looking coral, but it's it just has such a thick mat of polyps that I can't think of any better way to describe it. Now, when the polyps are retracted, it looks completely different. It looks like all these weird clumps on the end of stalks. It's truly a very unique coral when you see it with its polyps out and with its polyps retracted. This is a coral that I've always felt I can kind of just put wherever and it does well. We had a mother colony of this underneath our rack in our soft coral flat for a couple months and it grew and did well. Um, was still getting some light but not that much. I've had frags in our SPS system off to the sides where they weren't quite getting blasted with 300 par but still getting a lot of light, a lot of flow and they did well, they grew. It's it's a very adaptable coral. It does well in pretty much all conditions. The one caveat I would say to that is it needs enough flow to not just be collecting detritus inside the colony. It grows very thick, so if you put it in the corner of the tank and the, those inner branches of the colony are just getting caked with detritus, that would probably hurt the coral long term. But otherwise, it's adaptable. It'll do well in low to higher light and low to high flow, I don't think there's a problem there at all. Give it some time, it'll settle in, and it'll take off for you. In terms of the growth rate for Asterospicularia, I like to say it's somewhere in between the fast growing soft corals, such as Pulsing Xenia or Suspicularia, and the slower growing soft corals, like Toadstools or Devil's Hands. It's definitely a little bit closer to the Pulsing Xenia or Suspicularia. They are closely related corals. But the bonus with Asterospicularia is it's not really an invasive coral at all. It will spread on whatever rock it is, but it's not going to escape that rock. I know a big complaint people have with Pulsing Xenia is that 
while you can isolate it on a rock island, it has a habit of getting off that island, even if you monitor it pretty carefully. With the stereospicularia, that's not a problem. As long as it's not touching any other rocks, it's not going to get off that island. One more interesting anecdote about this coral is that porcelain and anemone crabs seem to love it. It really shouldn't be providing them any additional protection that the anemones that they typically host would, but we keep our porcelain anemone crabs in our soft coral flat because that's also where we keep our rock flowers and our maxi minis. And every time we get new porcelain anemone crabs, we typically put them right in with the rock flowers and the maxi minis, and the next day they are all over our asterospicularia. So I'm not too sure why that is, but it's always been something cool about this coral. The corals that tend to get a lot of attention in this hobby are typically the classic strains, things like the Bali Green Slimer, which we covered in our last video, or the really hot corals at that point in time. Right now that would be Euphilia or Frimbrayphilia corals. But when you've been in the hobby for a while, you tend to develop an appreciation for the more oddball or unusual corals, and that's where the Asterospicularia really fits in. It is truly a unique coral that you don't encounter that often, and that's why we love farming it at New Dawn Aquaculture. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. We're going to be doing videos on all the rest of the coral strains we farm, as well as all the dry goods we use to farm those corals. So, thanks for watching.